who, who wants to go first? <laughs> I think our guest is it. All right, let, I will stand up to speak to begin with, but uh, let, let me say how delighted I am to be in Hong Kong, to have the opportunity to talk to you this afternoon, to talk a little bit about Oxford University, to talk a little bit, as I'm sure there will be questions on, on what the nature of an Oxford education is and how students in Hong Kong might prepare for that education. It was particularly nice to be introduced by Ben a few moments ago as the Vice Chancellor. Of, uh, he will share his experience in leading a 900-year-old institution. What I have to confess to you is that like President Chan, I am a very young Vice Chancellor. <laughs> I am just six months old. I am like a small baby Vice Chancellor. But of course, one of the delights of taking the reins at a world-class university like Oxford is that even though I have only been in the role for six months, I can take complete credit for the previous 900 years. And so I will be doing so today. And, and I thought I would just spend a few moments at the beginning. Just, just We will talk about many things this afternoon, I know. But, but what does it take in the 21st century to be a world-class university. That is something that we in Oxford are always reminding ourselves of. Oxford is 900 years old. It's been one of the world's leading universities for many hundreds of years. But the moment that Oxford becomes complacent and takes it for granted that it will always be a world-class university, that is the moment when we will begin our decline. And so it's important for me in Oxford to say the things that I'm going to say now. I think it is very important for those who are leading universities like Hong Kong UST, which is very much on the trajectory upwards, like the universities of, of Xinhua, Beida, Fudan, and Jiao Tong in, in mainland China, like other universities in Hong Kong, very much on an upward trajectory, it's important that we focus on what is it that creates a world-class university. And I think there are four absolutely critical factors that are, must be in place to be world-class. And I'll go through them very briefly. The first is people. The second is a commitment to research excellence. The third, and equally important, is a complete commitment and focus on a high-quality education. And the fourth is the financial resources to allow you to achieve those goals, to remain competitive among the world of higher education. So first one was people. And I think that is arguably the most important of all. A world-class university is world-class because it attracts world-class minds. A university has really only, uh, you know, it has only three core mission. You know, the, what is the mission of a world-class university? In many ways, the mission is very simple. It is to create knowledge in the laboratories and the libraries. It is to disseminate knowledge in the classrooms and it is to preserve knowledge in museums and libraries. And it is that core mission of the university that is carried out by people. World-class minds are attracted to world-class world universities. And of course, that starts first and foremost with the professors, the academic staff, the faculty, the researchers and the teachers in the universities. We must place an absolute excellence on all of the faculty we recruit and within a world-class university we must provide them with the facilities, labs, libraries and the resources to carry out their path-breaking research. It is a core fact of world-class universities that they have concentrations of brilliant minds. It is only 
when a, a leading faculty member knows that they will be in the company of similarly talented faculty members, that you will be able to attract them to a university. I will give you one example. Oxford is absolutely delighted because we have recently announced that we have attracted a man called Andrew Wiles to Oxford as a professor. Now, some of you may have heard of Andrew Wiles. He is the most distinguished mathematician in the world. He was at Princeton, and Oxford has recruited him to back to Oxford. You may have heard of him because he was the man who solved Fermat's last theorem, the mathematical problem that had stumped mathematicians for 350 years. Andrew Wiles solved it. He is returning to Oxford. Why? He was at Princeton. He is returning because in Oxford we have a clustering of world-class talent in mathematics. He wants to be among them. He wants to be at a great world-class university. It is that critical mass phenomenon that is so important in our ability to attract the minds who then will do the path-breaking research that will redefine fields, that will push back the frontiers of knowledge. So, of course, world-class teachers, but we must also attract world-class students. We must also put in an enormous effort to find the, the facilities to offer students the education. We'll come on to education in a few moments. But more than that, to, to really create an environment for teaching and learning that brings students from all over the world to study at Oxford. And we believe strongly we have created that. Oxford is a place that over many hundreds of years has created a unique learning environment. One of the key parts of that learning environment are the Oxford colleges. And of course, you all know Oxford is made up of 38 individual colleges and the students live and study in the colleges. And the colleges create a, a magnificent community. They are a small community, like a small family of scholars within a large university. O Oxford is quite a large university. There are 20,000 students in total in Oxford. But each of the colleges provides that sense of family. It provides that sense of personal attention that the students then know that they can speak with professors, they can, they can meet their fellow students. And that's actually a very significant part of, of, of the world-class university life. It is the, 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 the learning that goes on between students, the conversations that take place at 3 o'clock in the morning. We all remember those when we were students. I can't possibly talk at 3 o'clock in the morning now. But, but our students do. They talk about life. They talk about philosophy. They talk about politics. And, and it is that kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning that is enormously facilitated in an Oxford college where students share bedrooms, they uh, eat breakfast, and, and are constantly in conversation with their fellow students. So attracting world-class students, and I am delighted to say that a good number of those world-class students come from Hong Kong. They are, I, you produce some of the best and the brightest, and I'm very pleased that every year uh, a, a sizable proportion of our, of our student applications and admits are Hong Kong students. And despite the reforms that are going on, I very much hope that will continue and that you all continue to send your best and brightest students to Oxford University.